All right, uh, next step here that we have with our tray and part of our safety certification is to go over sanding. So before I get started, I already took my watch off. I'm going to take my ring off. Again, no hair. Don't have to worry about that. I have closed-toed shoes on and short sleeves, so we're all good to go. And no uh, bling hanging off here. So a couple things I want to show you here at your workstations um, are kind of the hand uh, sanding tools that we have for you that you can use on different projects throughout your time here at Fox River. And I'm going to show you some of the bigger sanding machines we have that probably be used more with guidance from myself or Mr. Harris, but uh, we may let some of you use it at times, so I want to make sure you're aware. Okay, first let's talk about where you can find everything. We have regular sandpaper, 220 and 120 for projects. We have sanding discs, they're called hook and loop discs, that you're going to use when you use an orbital sander. All this stuff should be found along with your sanding block and your orbital sander inside your station down here in the storage area. Uh, sandpaper will be here, sanding blocks will be there, orbital sanders are on the bottom. If for some reason at any time you realize that you're out of sandpaper or you need more sanding um, pads, just let us know and we'll get them for you because that's in one of those rooms that we have locked up. So I pulled this stuff out already so I can show you what we're going to do with our tray. Okay, first thing we're going to show you how to do is just regular, uh, regular sandpaper in what's called a sanding block. So sanding blocks have these flaps on each side. What you do is you stick your sandpaper in and you have these like nails that are sticking out. So you stick your sandpaper in, you push down, and then you wrap it around the flat end and you put the sandpaper on the other side, sometimes folding over the other side. Now you have a piece of sandpaper that can fit in a nice uh, tool that holds in your hand. With your tray, everything's now assembled. So what we're going to do is we're going to sand down the edges as best as we can. Okay, so you can either hold it by hand and just kind of do a couple small sections at a time with your sanding block. If you need um, or want an extra hand, so you have two hands to work with, a couple different things. You can use the vise at your station. You loosen it up as far as you need to. And then you can clamp down your piece and then you can use your sanding block to go through the pieces and make sure they are super smooth. And go around your entire piece till everything is smooth. Any pencil marks on your wood, they gotta go. If you use pen or Sharpie, it's gonna take a lot more sanding to get it done. The other thing you wanna make sure is any of your joints or where the wood kinda comes together that everything is super smooth as well. So using the sanding block allows us to kinda work those spaces. By using the vise, my hands are free and I can kind of use two hands if I need to somewhere. Um, try to round the corners on this. So using the sanding block works. If you don't have a vise available, you can always grab clamps. We have these over by our stain and paint area. And you can always clamp down a piece to the table. Kind of loosen it up. Tighten it down so you have it in one spot and then you can go through and keep sanding the sides of your tray or, or any project that we have really but again this is for the certification so you can work your way around there if you don't want to use a sanding block that's perfectly fine you can just take your sandpaper piece and you can just have it loose in your hand as well always encourage you to kind of fold it into a, uh, a piece that's manageable for your hands and you just kind of work your way around it. You don't need the clamp. You know, always holding your hand around the table and work your way around, making sure you get all the marks off of any project you have. Okay, so that's kind of the sandpaper piece. The other tool that you have at each station, we have several of them, is an orbital sander. Now I'm going to show you using the base of this. So I'm going to clamp this down. Definitely want to clamp whenever you're using the orbital sander. Um, Normally, this is used more when you have a bigger surface area. So the orbital sanders are really nice, so it kind of helps do the work for you. You can see that the orbital sanders have a little bag. This is where the dust goes in. We have to dump them out every now and then. Here's your sanding pad. It's a hook and loop system. So we have five inch uh, sanders. So all you do is you take the back end of the sandpaper and you apply it to the hook and loop. 
push it on, and now you're good to go. Okay? Do not ever use a sander without sandpaper already on it. You can mess up the hook and loop system, and then we have to find pieces or throw it out and hopefully get a new one. It has a start and uh, on and off switch on it. Pretty straightforward. But to always make sure you don't have any issues using this, these are some of the procedures we want to make sure you're aware of. When you have your sander, set it down on its side, okay? Just in case it wasn't turned off last time. Do not run it until you have it plugged in. So I'm going to bring down our charger here, or our little power station here. I'm going to plug it in. Oh, see what I mean? You always want to make sure you have it on the side. Otherwise, the sandpaper can damage your table. So I'll check again. I'll make sure it's turned off. Okay. Plug it in. Now I will grab the sander with my hand and I will turn it on and now I will, I will use it. So you let it get up to speed just like anything else and then you just apply the pad to the surface of what you're sanding and you just kind of hold it and work its way around. Usually making small little circles or lines across and you just slowly work it. It's also nice when you have something clamped too that you can round the edges. The clamp allows you to kind of have your other hand there in case you need assistance. And this does speed up the sanding process when you use these quite a bit. But it's very hard with a small project. Now that I'm done, I'm going to turn it off, wait till it's done moving, now set it down. Okay? Again, on the side. And once I'm all done using it, I make sure that I unplug it. And I can put it off to the side for now. But since I'm done with it for today, I'm going to make sure I put my tools away before I move on to the next step. So I'm wrap that up real quick. I'm going to put this and my sanding block back inside the cabinet. You can leave the sanding pad on. No big deal leaving that on. It doesn't damage anything. Um, and the next person will just have to check to make sure there's still grit on it. I barely used it, so I know there's a lot of grit. Next person may have to check that. Clamps, I'm going to leave here for now because I know I have some other projects. Okay, that's the hand sanding stuff. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is our sander grinder and our spindle sander. So walk with me across the shop. So the sander, uh, belt sander and disc grinder is a bigger tool and works with a lot more power, a lot more torque. So we can sand things a lot quicker and easier. They both run off the same motor. So when you turn it on, both are running. You have to be aware of that. Okay? The disc sander rotates in a counterclockwise fashion, and the belt also goes in a counterclockwise fashion, but it goes straight down. When you're done with it, or when you're going to run it first, you make sure it's at optimal speed before you do anything. When you're done, you turn it off, and you can see it takes a while for it to come to a complete stop. I'm not going to leave the station until the thing is at a complete stop. Now I would leave. Okay? A couple other things. They both have their own table where you're going to put the material on flat surfaced. And this one also has an adjusting knob for the belt. In case we notice the belt starts to slide, I'll turn it on and show you. Full speed now. You can adjust it one way or the other to make sure that the belt doesn't fall off. Pulling it towards you brings it to the right. And it kind of keeps it right in that same spot. So, when you're using the sander, always make sure you have two hands on your material and you push it against the belt. You don't force it against the belt, you just kind of guide it towards it. And you just allow it to do its job with sanding a piece. And we can move around. You kind of work your way around. Okay. Now the other thing I want to show you is the disc sander. And the disc sander works the same way, but we're really only going to be using the left hand side of it because like I said, it moves counterclockwise. If I put something on here and I don't hold it firmly enough, whew, it's going to go flying. Okay. So only on the right side. And I just want to kind of round the corners. So two hands on here and I'm just going to slowly apply a little pressure to the disc and let it kind of do its, its circling. Saw a couple sparks. I forgot there's some nails there. Okay, I'm going to do this corner. And I can do the rest later, but I just want to show you how it works. 
The other thing I want, I want you to be aware of with this machine, because it's moving a lot faster, it's applying a lot more force, and that force is friction. Friction causes heat. This does get hot, so be careful. And if you do have nails, you have to be careful that you're not grinding on the nails too much, or you will rip the disc or rip the belt. If that happens, let us know, Mr. Harris and myself, so we can get it fixed. Last sanding tool I want to show you. We don't use it very often, but it's a spindle sander. Go ahead and turn it on. We have different sized discs that go on here, and it's a round uh, spindle that goes up and down, and it allows us to be able to sand rounded edges and other intricate uh, pieces. Just so you can see how it works. Again, same thing, you make sure it's at optimal speed. If I'm trying to do a piece that needs a little sanding, let's do in the crevice here, since we have the small one. You two hands, you apply it to the, uh, to the sanding disc, and you kind of push, you guide, I should say, guide, not force, your sanding so you can get maybe the nice rounded edge on this corner. And you just kind of take your time working with it. Again, when you're done, wait till it's completely stopped before you walk away from it and take your piece with you. Okay? Again, you always want to get rid of any imperfections, any words that are on here, any pencil, any um, pen, anything at all, so that your project looks as nice as it possibly can. That's all our sanding tools. Uh, if you got any questions, see one of us, and then we'll see you in the next video.